Hello? Welcome. This is Flames of the two cities. Oh, I'm so excited. Going to Catholic school, you learn one major thing. Catholic school sucks. Despite the school's many attempts to make Catholicism cool and hopefully draw you in with their rad ideas, you eventually ricochet away and hate everything about the religion. I remember how my teacher would boast about her favorite saints, like the one who killed herself by sticking a pin in her temple, or the one named Doris Day, which I always confused with the actress. I always found myself knowing and, in turn, hating any form or sect of Christianity. It was the patriarchy in a nutshell, and women who bent over and let it happen. It was stupid and filled with people who didn't want to change the world for the better. Listeners, I was wrong. Listeners, let me introduce you to Hildegard of Bingen. My name is Ellie, and welcome to this Tales of Two Cities Badass Chick mini-episode. In the monastery of Rupertsburg, a place in rural Germany, lived the abbess, author, composer, prophet, herbalist, and visionary Hildegard of Bingen. Hildegard was born around 1108 in the Rhineland-Palatinate region of Germany. She was born to wealthy parents and started having visions at a young age. She said, quote, I was only in my third year when I saw a heavenly light, which made my soul tremble. But because I was a child, I could not speak out. This, of course, terrified her, also adding, quote, When I became exhausted, I tried to find out from my nurse if she saw anything at all other than the usual objects. She answered, nothing, because she saw nothing like I did. Then... I was seized with a great fear and did not dare to reveal this to anyone, end quote. As a child, Hildegard was, quote, enclosed in an anchoret, or religious recluse, along with a teenager named Jutta in a remote Benedictine monastery in Disenbodenburg. Anchorets were usually in a small cell or structure attached to the church. They were given food through grills and didn't communicate with the outside world. A pretty lonely start for anyone, religious or not. Judda became famous. Her ethereal appearance attracted everyone to Disenbodyberg. Judda was the abbess, and Hildegard was the adopted daughter. Judda died in 1136, and Hildegard became the unofficial replacement. Even though she still had visions, she kept them silent, until 1141. She explains in her book, Scivius, and, behold, in the forty-third year of my passing course, while I was intent upon a heavenly vision with great fear and tremendous effort, I saw a great splendor, in which a voice came from the heavens saying to me, O weak mortal, both ash of ash and rottenness of rottenness, say and write what you see and hear. But because you are fearful in speaking, and simple in explaining, and unlearned in writing these things, Say and write them, not according to human speech, nor the understanding of human creativity. Speak the things you see and hear, and write them not according to yourself or any other person, but according to the will of the one who knows, sees, and disposes all things in the hidden places of his mysteries. End quote. She began writing down her visions and thoughts on wax tablets. Her friend, Volmar, a monk and scribe, would translate them into Latin. In 1147, Pope Eugenius III declared Hildegard's writings authentic, prophetic, and important works. Pretty amazing for a woman not allowed to leave her room. Hildegard's biographer, Barbara Newman, believes that Hildegard gave her voice against patriarchal Catholicism. For example, in 1148, Hildegard claimed to have had a vision in which God told her to leave Disembodyberg Monastery and build a new monastery atop the nearby Mount of St. Rupert. When the church said no because they didn't want to lose money or have a woman do anything in general, she suddenly became sick. Freaking out that they might have killed their moneymaker, the church agreed for her to move, and Hildegard, quote, rose up very sprightly, as if she had not at all been disabled for so long a time, 
End quote. At Rupertsburg Monastery, Hildegard continued to use her visions to change what she didn't like about the church. I mean, she was a badass. Who was going to stop her? When the church complained that Hildegard allowed the nuns to dress in awesome white outfit with their hair long instead of shaved, Hildegard said that God was okay with it. She wrote, quote, I saw that a white veil to cover the virgin's hair was to be the proper emblem of virginity, end quote. Hildegard also became an advisor and honest critic of kings, queens, emperors, popes, and priests. Over 400 of her letters have survived, and biographer Fiona Maddox believes that they offer fascinating insight into who she was as a person. To men, she was a poor, fragile, sad woman who was just God's telephone. To, with women, she was straightforward and honest and gave solid advice to those who asked for it. She composed over 80 songs for her virgins to sing in the monastery chapel, one of which you are listening to right now. And she also founded a second monastery. She wrote Cause et Curge and Physica, which offered more common sense to medical and nutritional advice. She listed thousands of herbal remedies and discussed sexuality. Sexuality! Mind you, this is the 1100s. Women don't talk about sex. Also, this is the Catholic Church. They still don't talk about sex. She would go on speaking tours where she would talk about how the church was corrupted. Imagine deal with it, sunglasses flying over her face. And despite the things she did, she also made up her own language, which consisted of over 900 words and an alternative alphabet. In her last years, she claimed that one of her advisors was ensnared by Satan. It was her last hurrah, because after that, she fell seriously ill and died in Rupertsburg on September 17, 1179, at the age of 82. Her biographer, Guibert of Jemblou, stated that as the badass woman lay dying, the mountain was showered with a light show consisting of a giant red cross with multicolored circles and smaller crosses. He states, quote, It is worthy of disbelief that by this sign, God was showing how bright was the splendor with which he was illuminating his beloved one in heaven, end quote. Music is Voices of Angels, Voices of Ascension by Hildegard von Bingen. Please rate and review and subscribe to us on SoundCloud, Google Play, YouTube, or iTunes. I want to also thank Atlas Obscura for providing the information on this awesome woman. And also, thanks for listening. <laughs>